Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. So let's just jump straight into things today. It's going to be an interesting tomorrow, less so today. That doesn't mean we don't have to pay attention today. We could do a little bit of learning. For the year, the NASDAQ's up 11.9%. Again, we're not quite halfway through the year. So we still have another month plus a week. That's a pretty good return. SP 500 is up 11.3%. Same. That's better than the historical norm of 8 to 10%. For the year, we're already there halfway through the year. Oh, oh, we're halfway there. No, no Bon Jovi songs. He seems like a happy man these days. S&P mid-cap 400 up 8.6% year-to-date. Again, another nice number for this time of year. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 5.6%. The Russell 2000 up 3.7%. The laggard, hey, but it's up. I do believe that actually does mean something. So there's hesitation today in front of NVIDIA's earnings tomorrow. And also we get Target's numbers tomorrow. More on that in just a second, because I think Target and Walmart are trying to tell us something. There's a mixed reaction today from Lowe's and Macy's. They're higher on earnings results. Palo Alto Networks and Zoom are lower. There is concern about CEO Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan leaving the company and retiring. And also he said yesterday, We're not going to buy back a lot of stock right now. Stock's had a big 70% run. He's been pretty prescient about his company and where they are. Um, He's got a good pulse on the world economy, a good pulse on the U.S. economy, and a good pulse on his own company. There's an expectation consolidation activity after a major run in the indices. We hit April lows, but again, we were up November, December, January, February, March. Then we hit some April lows, and now May right back to record highs. There's upcoming Memorial Day weekend. There's a phrase that says sell in May and go away. That is absolutely positively not what I'm doing this year because I expect more gains in the summertime months. Chip maker, chip equipment maker is the right way of saying it. Lamb Research provided its shareholders with something new. A $10 billion share buyback authorization, a 10 for 1 stock split. The potential pending Trump administration are starting to lay out economic plans. One of the things they're talking about is eliminating stock buybacks. I would not like that. And if there's maybe 10 things you vote for, whether it be inflation or, um, you know, what, what we're doing overseas with, with wars. Most people vote with the economy and what they think is is the right direction and or not. But again, um, unemployment's not the problem, but affording groceries is the problem. There's a lot to think about with the upcoming elections. No doubt about it. Stocks are wobbling today. Again, we just hit all-time record highs, so we should wobble. Fed Governor Christopher Waller said he wants to see several months of supportive inflation data before lowering rates. Boo! Boo! Now, he wants to see inflation under control and not going higher for several months. Several to me is three to five. That takes us basically to the end of the year. Cassettes tapes are back in style. Taylor Swift's The Tortured Poets Department sold 1.6 million physical units in the first week. 859,000 units of vinyl, 760,000 CDs, 21,000 cassette tapes. Now, I'm surprised vinyl is that popular. Again, I'm not hip. I'm not cool. I'm not even one of a kind. But vinyl is beating CDs. And again, this is all great until those physical copies, especially cassette tapes, start to unwind and do a break. You're like, I love music streaming. Millennials are most likely to be the quiet vacationing types. Nearly 4 in 10 say they've taken time off without communicating it to their manager. Some are moving their mouths, mouses automatically throughout the day. Some are setting up little robots to, to move the mouse around so it looks like they're moving. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Scarlett Johansson says OpenAI stole her voice. ChatGPT Sky Voice is eerily similar. She was the voice of the artificial intelligence assistant in 2013 movie Her. 
bit of sadness, gray divorce rates have doubled for those over 50 and tripled for those over 65 plus. One in seven Generation Z credit card users are maxed out. That's not great for the future. 15.3% Generation Z. 4.8% baby boomers, 9.6% Gen Xers. Americans are going into debt to buy groceries. The average cost of groceries are $5,700 a month. That works out to uh, $5,700 a year. That works out to about $475 per month. Last year, inflation was up about 5% in food costs. Grocery prices shot up bigly in 2021, so they're slowing down, but we still remain with the higher elevated costs. 70% of all grocery transactions are through credit cards or debit cards. 33% of adults who used a credit card for groceries repaid the charges in full. That means 66% did it. 20% of adults paid less than the full. Wow. 7.1% didn't make the minimum payments. Credit card rates average 22.8%. So there's a, a, a term, I know you've heard it, food insecurity. It's starting to spread. It's definitely not just for the homeless people. It's starting to spread to lower incomes and middle incomes. Especially if you're doing something foolish like using payday loans or buy now, pay later programs to cover your basic food costs, you're eventually going to slip into your savings or your credit cards and pay more. It's it's tragic what you're going to lose. So I was talking a little bit about one of the big fights that is brewing right here, right now, and it's the fight between Target and the fight between Walmart. Target said they're going to be slashing prices on up to 5,000 items through the summer on basically things to lure you back in. Food, milk, fruit, diapers, pet food, Clorox Prime, Prime, the energy drink from YouTuber Logan Paul. Target says it intends to collectively save consumers millions. Target and Walmart both were opened up in 1962. They've been going head-to-head -head against each other ever since. And they're both battling the scourge of inflation. On Monday, big box retailer Target lowered uh, prices on 1,500 grocery items. Now they're going to lower prices on 5,000 more. Trying to keep pace with Walmart. Keep people coming in. Keep the cash flow servicing Target versus servicing Walmart. Target reports its earnings on Wednesday. The company has surpassed earnings expectations in the last five straight quarters. But they've seen revenue decrease. And expected to decrease another three to five percent in the first quarter. So consumers are becoming more particular with their spending habits. We've heard out of McDonald's, Starbucks, Home Depot that they're cutting back. That consumers are cutting back on frappuccinos, renovations, and Happy Meals. They're still selling out for Sweet Garden veggie bowls and international flights on Delta at an impressive rate. So we're not completely struggling. Target will give us a good insight into the consumer tomorrow. NVIDIA will give us a good insight into AI and is the tech boom justified? You're listening to me, Rob Black, on The Rob Black Show. Find me online at robblackshow.com. YouTube, my favorite way of communicating with you. It's a little more visual if you know what I'm saying. Rob Black Show, subscribe. Be my friend. Find me online at robblackshow.com. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial. Thank you for listening to the show. I am quietly thinking about retirement at some point. I'm now at that age where I can afford to retire. Spend more time with the family. Slow down take longer vacations, but I still kind of want to work. I've not figured out what I'm going to do after retirement, so I still kind of want to work. Um, I have to work at least another 18 months, then maybe do I go more part-time, do I go more broadcasting? I haven't really thought that one out yet. Well, we all have a retirement plan, whether we want to or not. We all have an estate plan, whether we want it or not. My brother Clint worked into his 60s, thought he wanted to retire, still had to work, and ultimately found that there was a lot of age discrimination that kind of messed up his ideas. 
he is a computer science type. He worked in Saudi Arabia in the oil fields, finding oil with analytical analysis. He is that kind of soul where he loves the Middle East and he loves anything that's 2,000 years old, whether they be ruins or old cities or deserts or, I don't know, arrowheads, things like that, right? I know 2,000 is probably too much to say for that. But he's on the elderly side of what does retirement look like? He wanted to work and he found age discrimination pushed him into a job paying less than he was expecting. Oh, and by the way, he had to leave Saudi Arabia when um, there was conflict in the Middle East and some Americans were getting their heads cut off. His company said, I think it's time for you to go. That's a weird way to lose your job, huh? It's been harder for people with fresh diplomas to get jobs this spring. Now we're moving from the elderly getting jobs to the younger getting jobs. The job market for the class of 2024 is meh. Meh. Not very good. Not terrible, but meh. Entry-level hiring is projected to fall 5.8% in 2024 compared with last year. So even though the job market's hot, employers are saying, we don't really want the new people. Or we want them less, is the right way of saying it. Entry-level employee confidence is the lowest it's been since 2016. So you come out of college, and even the pandemic, you were more optimistic about getting a job than uh, now. A lot of would-be grads or soon-be grads have submitted over 100 applications in order to land a job. Parent pleaser industry is like, hey, you went to college. Can you get a job in finance consulting or tech? Those are the toughest jobs to get right now. Unless you want to use your tech skills in healthcare or in the government. Computer science majors are the major bummer. What led to the major bummer for computer science majors? The big tech layoffs and the hiring pivot to AI-focused roles. You're not getting recruited. Sorry. Software engineering has dropped 30% from pre-pandemic levels. The part-time work is work. It's the fallback option to please mom and dad. Positions in retail, transportation, and healthcare. How do you feel about that? There's an old saying on Wall Street that says this time of year, sell in May and go away. I'm not making a prediction. I'm not in the prediction business. But I'm not going with that this year. The summer months have historically been tough on stocks. The S&P 500 averaged about a 2% gain from May through October since 1990. That lags the average performance from November through April, which is 7%. So majority of the gains happens from November through Christmas, through the winter into spring. And the summer months, dad's on vacation. The kids are on vacation. We're at the beach. Hmm. I think the earnings are starting to heat up on Wall Street as inflation starting to temper, not quite yet, but starting. And the next thing on the, the books should be a rate cut in September or maybe later. But those could be the catalyst of the next move up on Wall Street, which could be, in my opinion, Wall Street's a discounted mechanism. It looks six months into the future. But do I like it today when a Fed president comes out and says, eh, we want to see several months of supportive inflation data before lowering rates? Fed Governor Christopher Waller. I don't I don't care either way. I work with what I'm with the cards I'm dealt. Past performance is not a guarantee of future returns. That's why I'm not doing the sell in May and go away. The markets reached record highs this month. Seems like a good time to sell. Nope, not for me. Some market experts don't see it at all. Stocks are on track to either remain flat or turn negative going forward, says one. Then you can find analysts saying, you know, we could still have another 3 to 5% upside through the end of the year. We don't know when it's going to come. I think everything's being based on the cool inflation data and not on the earnings. I like the earnings in the long term. Um... 
NVIDIA could make the sell in May and go away case on Wednesday. It's the crown jewel of the AI frenzy. It's a stock I recommended to you for years. It's a stock I've owned for years. It's a stock that I bought a lot of when the markets dipped in 2022. I'd always had exposure to it, just not enough in my mind. One. So NVIDIA takes center stage. Big numbers and a strong outlook could get the market riled up about the potential for AI game. As the key chip maker in the space, a win for NVIDIA is a win for everyone betting on the future of AI. If you have a large position in NVIDIA, I highly recommend not just sitting on it, but being proactive with it with maybe an options overlay strategy. If you work with a financial planner, if not, don't do it. I've never seen individuals do options intelligently on their own. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money invested and more. Thanks for listening to the show. Don't forget, my YouTube channel is my pride and joy. I'll do that long after. Um, I'll do that long into retirement. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Big event coming up in June, a pints and portfolio. Check it out. Have a beer with me. I'm Rob Black. Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. I'm always wildly proud of dads who make their kids listen to the show while they're driving them to school. I can't imagine any reasonable mother <laughs> would let their kids listen to this as they get ready for school. But the dads who are saying like, hey, try to get one or two concepts here or there. I would much rather teach you how to fish than give you a fish. Um, sometimes the content's not going to hit kids at all, but sometimes it will. For instance, gray divorce. Now, kids, I'm talking to you about your mom and dad. Those rates have doubled for those over 50 and tripled for those over 65. It is the largest percentage of divorces in the United States, people over 50. And the numbers get even scarier when you hit 65. Not trying to scare you, just saying there's a lot of financial ramifications when this happens. Divorce rarely is a good thing. Severe consequences, especially for older Americans. Splitting financial assets becomes a lot more cumbersome when individuals have spent decades together. Building businesses, accruing assets, seeing home prices go up. Great divorce can present especially dire consequences for women who report experience on a 45% drop in their living standards compared to 21% drop for men. Um, I strangely get it. And I'm just trying to throw as much out there for you to see what sticks as far as what do you want to learn. Um, stock I do not understand, and I will admit I do not understand it. Let's see if you can guess what it is. I bet you could if you thought about it. I'm a fundamental guy. Let's start. Let me cheat by giving you some hints. I like seeing good revenues. I like seeing good earnings. Margins are impressive to me. I like to see sales growing quarter to quarter, year over year. I like to see good management teams who've succeeded before. Who have worked through good economies and bad economies. I see you, pandemic. I see you, recession. I've, I've worked through one of those. I've done this through... 25 plus years now. I haven't seen it all, but I've seen numerous recessions and I've seen crazy stuff. You think back to Y2K and it's scaring people. People thought computers were going to stop working. They thought planes were going to fall out of the sky. There was Y2K investments. It's pretty fun. It's not funny, but telling. So I think it's, it's important to get some experience in this industry. So that you feel comfortable with it. And you got to like be able to say, these are things that I like. I like revenues. I like earnings. I like margins. I like management. I like uh, return on equity, return on investment. I like total addressable market. I like any time a company could work with 100 million plus consumers or work with enterprises. Enterprises spend money in good economies and bad economies. Consumers tend to tighten. So one company that I do not understand and I should probably write a Dr. Seuss-style book of, I do not understand the good. I do not understand the bad. I do not understand the revenue. I do not understand the losses. It's Trump Media, down 8% today to $44. I would have bet, if you had me bet, 
that after its first earnings release, it'd be a $10 stock. I would have been wrong. But the people who are buying it aren't investors. They're speculators on who's going to become president. And they're speculators, uh, not speculators, they're fans of Republicans who want to make America great again. Trump's social media venture has started to a rocky start this year. The company behind Truth Social recorded a $770,000 in revenue, but a net loss of $327 million. If Drunk Uncle were to come up to me at Christmas this year and say, I got a business plan, it's going to lose seven hundred. it's going to make $777,000 in the first quarter. It's going to make $770,000 in the first quarter. Can you leave me some money? I'm like, how much are you going to lose? $327 million. I'm like, nope. Not going to happen. Nope. The company brought in $1.1 million in revenue in the same period a year ago, but lost $210 million. So ultimately, in two quarters of the same year, it brought in roughly $1.9 million in revenue, but it lost $540 million. Does it have enough? My question is, are you going to be able to stay in business? Drunk uncle? They say they've got a sufficient working capital to fund operations for the foreseeable future. That's not how I invest. If that's what you're looking for from me, I'm the wrong guy. Elsewhere, the Affordable Care Act might start getting dental insurance. Good golly. If I, there's one thing I can tell you is teeth are expensive. Failing teeth are expensive. Brush your teeth, floss your teeth. And if you want to do that cactus juice also, good for you. Good for you. Uh, I'm not going to knock you. In a move last month that received little fanfare, the Biden administration finalized a rule that would give states the option of adding adult dental insurance coverage as part of the Affordable Care Act. Under Biden's rules, states have until 2025 to decide whether to mandate that insurers cover dental benefits for adults. I like the idea. You lose a tooth and it has to be extracted. Uh, and you want to put in a, uh, a replacement. That's a good five, six, seven thousand dollars these days. Ooh. eBay announced today is inaugural re-commerce day to celebrate pre-loved shopping. I'm all for pre-loved shopping. I'm not against getting stuff that's been pre-owned. Especially if I could save some money. Probably the best thing you can save money on and re-owned is cars. And yet Americans like that new car smells so much that they're willing to pay 20% more than something they can get for 20% less. So some other fun stories of note. Instagram has a desperate move. Are you on Instagram? I'm on Instagram. I don't really promote it, though. Um, I follow a lot of the bands that I like on Instagram. And then I find myself getting caught up in the algorithm. I'm like, oh, that was funny. I might as well follow that. Oh, that was funny. I might as well follow that. Oh, look at that car crash. Might as well follow that. Instagram is having problems with the Generation Z fleeing the social media platform. All social media platforms. Meta has a new plan, and it's a dumb one at that, to win them back. Instagram wants you to super duper like everything and super duper post more especially from creators. So Instagram is pulling out all the stops on lameness. Some of them will be better than others, but the one that I found down was achievements. Milestones on the platform. Virtual rewards. Post seven days in a row and you get something more positive. Um, a star, a cookie. A virtual star, a virtual cookie. Seven days in a row posting. If you get uh, milestones on the platform of signups, of followers, you get a woohoo. A digital woohoo, though. Not even a real Mark Zuckerberg won't come to your house and go woohoo. So it's called gamification. And I don't like it with investing, where Robinhood says, oh, you've invested seven days in a row. Want to buy another stock? I don't like it. I honestly might buy five stocks a year. More than likely, I'm buying four more of the same thing I already own and maybe one or two new ideas a year. With Acorns, Acorns is an app that I have that I started roughly four years ago. I love the app. I think you should use the app. 
my company, EP Wealth, told me, I don't know about that. And I said, I'm doing a show for individual investors. I'm not doing a, like, I, I, I'm going to say this. If then they, 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 they let me. But they don't want me to support in too many services that they don't babysit, that they don't approve of, per se. Good for them. I think that's great that they have um, standards that they want to make sure that I'm not giving you crazy ideas. So in this case, um, Acorns will take your credit cards, your debit cards. Anytime you make a purchase, it'll round it up. I love that. It'll take that difference in the roundup and invest it for you. And it's a teeny, teeny, tiny little bit amount of money. So let's say you get a $5.25 latte today. It'll take 75 cents and say you spent six bucks. And it'll invest that 75 cents for you. Since I've been doing this over the last four plus years, I have pulled in over $100,000 from roundups and investment returns on the stock market as I mark my account aggressive. I feel pretty good about that. I, I feel I spend more than you. I have more transactions. I've got four people in my family making transactions. But all of them are hitting me just the slightest bit with the roundup cost. But that's forced savings, and that's on top of my 401k. And uh, then my credit card rewards, most of them I put back into either my bill and or uh, investments. Here's the Fidelity credit cards that you can get that will take your reward points and invest it in a 401k or an IRA for you. I think that's pretty cool. But Instagram's a little bit on the desperate side, and they're trying to do the digital woohoos to get you engaged with gamification. Acorns does a little bit of the gamification. If I were to pull out my app right now, let's see if I can do it in the time amount that I have. Pulling it out now, going through my phone, hitting the finance area, sliding the left, hitting Acorns. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to do this fast enough, but I probably have something like 200 straight weeks of uh, milestones. Reach milestone 10 roundups, reached a milestone recurring investment, reached a milestone 10. Oh, you get the idea. Um, it sends me little alerts that says, you've invested again. You didn't miss one week in the last 200. Good for you. Gamification of money? Ooh, a little bit yucky to me. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black, thanking you for listening to the show. I do my best to provide you really good content on financial matters. I tell you the credit cards that I use, they're all reward cards. One of them has a big fee on it, but it also gives me $300 in travel credits, free TSA, and 3 to 3% on travel um, points, as well as one and a half points redeeming. So it, it works out well for me, but it's, it's pretty close. I don't know if I pay $450, $500 for a credit card in the future, especially in, if you're not going to use the points correctly. I try to tell you things like I have term life insurance from age 20 to 60, and then I have new life insurance. If I die, my kids don't need my income anymore. Um, there's enough in savings and investments to continue to pay for mortgages and colleges and future weddings. I only insure what I can't afford to lose, my ability to earn income from age 20 to 60. If I was in a different world and... I had a situation where I wasn't making ends meet and I was living with my sister and I had no loved ones, no animals. I probably wouldn't have life insurance because it might, no one needs my income. It's kind of dark how quickly this show can get, right? Talking about gray divorce and how it can destroy women who I think are goddesses. Sure, men are gods, but I'm pretty darn sure every woman on the planet is a goddess. Um, 
people are talking about the upcoming elections, and I, I think there's a lot of things that could spell trouble for Biden. Rent and food cost being particularly two of them. People feel rents have gotten out of control and food costs have gotten out of control. So if you're not making 60000 plus, you're having trouble just living. Or living at a quality of life that you feel is up to your standards. 50% of Americans are a paycheck away from disaster. The U.S. experienced a 12% increase in homelessness from 2022 to 2023. Rent soared. Pandemic resources evaporated. Um, I would have a lot of anxiety if I didn't have my career established. And trust me, where I don't feel bad for you is I worked my butt off in my 20s. Uh, I didn't get married. I didn't settle down. I didn't have a lot of fun. I got ahead because I had this anxiety of I got to do it now. I still have an anxiety of like, do I have enough? And I have, trust me, I have enough, but there's still some anxiety in there. There's a lot of parts of the country that are swing state areas that sometimes they vote Republican, sometimes they vote Democrat. And rent is an aspect of inflation that concerns a lot of people, as are food costs. Um, it's going to be an interesting election cycle, to say, in my opinion. Dell said something kind of interesting. They said the AIPC will be pretty standard in 2025. Big winner in this is Qualcomm. I own shares of Qualcomm for disclosure reasons. PC makers unveiled new computers yesterday. Some pretty cool features like upscaling your old photos. So if you had made uh, some photos of your kids with a phone back in 2008, it's probably pretty grainy. You could upscale it and make it look pretty sweet. There's also a scroll back technology that lets you go back in time. And if you were to say, um, show me conversations I've had about closed by, it'll find out on your computer what app you were on, what chat you were involved in, a website you visited and show you everything on close and you can go back screen by screen by screen. Helpful. Yes. Revolutionary. No AI barely. So NVIDIA is going to be the big story tomorrow afternoon. Target's going to be a big story in the morning. Target's going to give us that consumer vibe. NVIDIA is going to give us the enterprise vibe. And is it spreading in AI to other areas other than just enterprise? If it's just Facebook and Google and Microsoft buying all the AI chips, watch out. Um, a lot of the analysts that I follow have an $1,100 to $1,200 price target on NVIDIA. Historically, NVIDIA is actually undervalued right now compared to where it's been in the past going into earnings. Um, it's at a higher level for sure, but their growth has been on a higher level for sure. I also own shares of NVIDIA. And guess what? If it falls 20%, I don't care. It's up 91% this year. If it were to fall 50%, I'd probably buy more. As the stock goes up 100%, 200%, 300%, it's wise to take some off the table so that it's, it's the house's money that you're dealing with. I don't expect NVIDIA to go up 200% over the next two years. I do not. I look at the market cap of the company and I go, $2 trillion. How do I see it getting to, to $8 trillion? I don't. Um, although they've done some pretty impressive venture capital investing in companies that will use AI and thus use their services. And they're not just selling chips, they're selling services. So they're selling, if you want access to the chips but don't want to buy the chips, we'll rent it to you. They've also got the software that helps build a lot of the AI technology as part of their core. Their gaming division on GPU is not as important as their AI division. And that's been the big switch in the last five years. For those of you who can go way back with me, back to the late 1990s, I had Christopher Knight on my show from the Brady Bunch, Peter, and he was a board member on NVIDIA, and he came into my studio and talked to me for two hours all about Brady Bunch, um, but also about NVIDIA and people like me playing video games. 
like doom, like quake. Anyhow, anyway, it's a pleasure to do the show for you. I'd love to meet you in person. I've got a pints and portfolio coming up in June in San Mateo. If you want a portfolio review, that's what it's tied towards. Kind of the people over 50 who are heading towards retirement, sign up at robblackshow.com. It's a Saturday event early in the day. Sign up at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com.